Hey there, welcome back to Eat with Sarah. I'm Sarah, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Washington DC in 24 hours. So I did a previous video on all the vegan and vegan friendly restaurants that are in Washington DC. And to be honest, there are a lot, and there's some that I didn't even mention in the video. So that can be a little bit overwhelming. And I'm gonna do this video to be a quick and dirty video about what I would do in DC if I was in DC for 24 hours. Let's jump right into Washington DC in 24 hours. What should you eat? What should you do? Where should you go? And so I'm assuming you're coming in around mid-morning to Washington DC if you're gonna have a full 24 hours in DC. So um, first of all, I recommend you drop off your luggage and your stuff at your hotel. One of my favorite areas to stay is the Foggy Bottom area. I have a few recommendations. For a five-star hotel, I recommend the Watergate. One, it's infamous. It has the room where it happened, like Nixon, they have like 70s deco. It's really cool with a bunch of newspaper articles on the wall. For a four-star hotel experience, I recommend either the Westin or the Fairmont. Very solid choices. And then for a three-star hotel recommendation, I recommend the Residence Inn in Foggy Bottom. They actually have cooking facilities in some, if not all, of the rooms. So if you want to swap out dinner or breakfast or lunch or any of my dining recommendations for a meal in your hotel room, that is easy to do. After you drop off your bags, I would recommend getting something to eat because traveling, it's just nice to settle in, get a meal. A lot of my favorite vegan restaurants are actually only open for dinner but two restaurants that are open for lunch are Rasika and Hip City Veg. So Rasika is an Indian restaurant. It's not exclusively vegan but they have a lot of vegan and vegetarian options. They have a separate sort of vegetarian section of their menu. Um, of course Indian food is going to be very plant friendly, vegan friendly, vegetarian friendly. And then another place if you want to go a little bit more casual is Hip City Veg and Hip City Veg has like burgers, fries, like milkshakes, something a little bit more down to earth compared to Rasika. It's a little bit more, it's more like business casual versus Hip City Veg is just like uber casual. After you hit up Rasika or Hip City Veg, both are in the downtown vicinity. Um, definitely time to check out some museums in Washington DC. Now there are a ton of museums in DC so so many so far my favorite museums that i've checked out in washington dc are the national museum of american history and then the postal museum in the american history museum um as an american i loved how it celebrated the technology in like silicon valley i loved how um, they had a little area for Ella Fitzgerald. I'm really into jazz. The American History Museum was really cool and I recommend you check it out as well. And I know the Postal Museum is kind of a weird recommendation, but it's fun, it's actually kid friendly, they have activities to do and it's very unique. They make a lot of their activities very engaging. Like when I went there, you could like design your own stamps on um, this like computer and then send them to yourself. I know my recommendation for visiting visiting the Postal Museum might be a little bit odd and slightly controversial. So if you have been to DC or if you are planning a trip to DC, I'd love to hear from you what recommendations you would have for one or two top museums to visit in Washington DC and go ahead and leave that in the comments below. So after you've checked out the mall and maybe a museum or two in DC, it is time for dinner. And I have a few recommendations, two recommendations for dinner in Washington DC. One is a very vegan friendly Equinox restaurant. It is not 100% vegan, but they do have all of their vegan plant-based options labeled. So it is very easy to eat there. And then the second recommendation that I have, if you want 100% vegan, I would go with Fancy Radish. Their menu changes regularly as well, but they do have a few things that continue to stay on their menu. So one thing I've noticed time after time, and as well as when you look online, is the Dan Dan noodles. I would recommend those. They're a little bit spicier, but I like spice. If you can handle like medium spice, you'll be okay. 
And then another dish that I would recommend trying is the Peruvian potatoes, kind of like patatas bravas from Spain, um, a little bit of a kick again, but not as spicy as the dandan dan noodles. So if you're okay with like a smidgen of spice, I would go with the Peruvian potatoes and then um, anything else that you want. And if you're more of a person like me who either wants to relax in their hotel room with a good book or relax in another way, I would would recommend getting a ferry ride across the Potomac. I would recommend getting it from like around Georgetown going over to Alexandria. It's around half an hour maybe. It's a nice little boat ride. It's calming. It can be maybe a little bit more romantic if it's not too crowded. So that's something that I would personally do. And then it also allows you the chance to explore the Riverside in Alexandria a little bit, maybe explore downtown Alexandria a little bit before you head back over into DC. When you get up the next morning, uh, time for breakfast. So there aren't a whole lot of breakfast options in DC because I've noticed that a lot of restaurants either open for lunch or dinner at 11 or like four or five respectively. But one restaurant, a good restaurant that is open for breakfast is Farewell and that's on 8th Street, not too far from where Fancy Radish is. And they have a ton of options. They have like an 8 a.m. sort of like special breakfast order that you can get from 8 to 11 a.m. Um, pancakes, like waffles, you know, all the breakfasty things that you could want are at Farewell. A second recommendation that I have if you don't want to go all the way over to A Street for breakfast is to grab something from Whole Foods Market. They have scones, they have muffins, they oftentimes have like tofu scrambles, they have oatmeal, you can put berries and granola and all the fixings on. They have plant-based yogurt. There's such a huge variety of things to get at Whole Foods Market. You can really um, get almost anything that you want. After breakfast, that has been around 24 hours in DC and your next steps are however you need to get home, whether it's on a plane or a train or driving, whatever it is, you explored a really solid 24 hours in DC and you should be very happy with what you got to experience because there's so much to experience in DC. You could definitely not do it all in 24 hours. Thanks for watching my 24 hour itinerary of what to do in Washington DC. Washington DC is a really great city. There's so many great things to do and it's really hard to condense it down into 24 hours. So I hope I helped you with overwhelm and how to reduce it at least a little bit. Finally, I'm announcing my plant-based culinary tour in Washington DC. I'm so excited to be announcing this. It's going to be amazing four days of eating at the best vegan and vegan friendly restaurants in Washington DC. They're going to be vegan cooking classes, cooking demos, vegan food tastings, and I'm going to be your guide, an eight-year veteran vegan chef. I am so excited to be sharing this with 10 other people. There is more information information coming soon and if you want to be the first to get that information please sign up for my mailing list in the link below. I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to see upcoming content that I'm making about around DC and the United States and the world in a vegan and plant-based way. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye! I discovered that yes, you can send a potato in the mail if you just have a redress and return address.